I'm going to talk about some cluster categories arising from Kaya categories. And this is based this, base, this is based on a joint work with uh, Won Bo Zhang in Seoul National University and Zhong Myung Kim in IBS CGP. So let me begin with Ginzburg DG algebra. So Q is a quiver, a cyclic quiver, which means it is the directed graph without any cycle. And this Q0 denotes the set of the vertice, vertices of Q and Q1 is the set of arrows in Q. And this is any integer greater than or equal to two. And we construct a new quiver Q hat from this Q by adding some arrows. So we add for each arrow alpha in Q, its former inverse alpha star. And for each vertex V of Q, we add a loop TV at V. And uh, for the degree, uh, we, the degree of alpha, the original arrow in Q is zero. And its former inverse alpha star has degree two minus D plus one. Uh, there's some reason why you use this D plus one rather than just D, you will, you will see very soon. So yeah, it, anyhow, its degree is two minus D plus one and every root TV has degree one minus D plus one. Then uh, as a graded algebra, uh, D plus one Calabial Ginzburg DG algebra, which I will denote by gamma Q, is just the path algebra of this new keeper Q hat. Uh, and just be, uh, since this is DG algebra, we have to define the differential D. So this differential is given by uh, these laws. So for each law, arrow alpha, both alpha and alpha star are closed. So the alpha and the alpha star is zero. And for each vertex V, uh, TV is not closed, but TV, the, the, the TV is given as given like this. And this is the one that appears in the pre-projective algebra of Q. So the first term is the summation of alpha star alpha uh, over all alpha starting from V. And the second term is the sum of, of, of all beta times beta star over all beta that ends at V. Let me show you some simple example of Ginzburg DG algebra. So, so here Q is based over this A3 thinking diagram. Then the new keyboard Q hat is given as follows. So for each arrow in alpha, uh, sorry, Q, we add its former arrow, former inverse like this. And for each vertex, we add the set root TIs. Uh, and uh, this, for example, the, the, the T1 is not zero, right? But so this is given as u12, u12 star, this is the first term, minus u21, ah, sorry, this is exactly zero, I'm sorry. This is the definition, right? So uh, this means that uh, u12 star, u12 is zero in the cohomology of this gamma Q. Sorry, sorry for my bad writing. Uh, uh, right. And the degree of these arrows are given like this. So, right. Oh, is there any question so far? about this Ginzburg DG algebra. Otherwise, uh, let me move on to the next slide. So I know that the first two speakers in this semester already talked about Kaya category, but uh, I'd like to review it briefly. Yeah, for some reason. So yeah, let me do that. So Liu domain 
is a symplectic manifold uh, with boundary. So the symplectic form omega um, uh, such that, so label domain is a symplectic manifold such that the symplectic form is exact. So there is one form lambda whose differential is exactly omega and the Liouville vector field set which is the dual of lambda with respect to the omega points outward along the boundary of M. So such a vector field always exists because omega is non-degenerate. So let me show you some example. So the first example is just a surface with boundary and omega is just an area form on M. So the typical picture is like this. So this is the boundary. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is the surface with two genus. So yeah, this is uh yeah, this is an example of symplectic manifold, and so example of Liouville domain, and any any area form, two-dimensional area form, it gives an uh, uh, gives some symplectic form, and I forgot to make, yeah, and because there is some, uh, if there is some, there, there is, because there is a boundary in this manifold, there is some primitive of this symplectic form, lambda, and uh, yeah, this lambda, out. Mm, yeah, if, if we restrict, mm, yeah, if we restrict this lambda to the boundary, then it is uh, like, uh, yeah, it is like some non vanishing one form on the boundary. Uh, yeah, actually, this is not very essential, but I just want to show you how this lambda look like. Uh, but yeah, anyhow, this is an example of Liouville domain. And let me show you one more example of a Liouville domain. So that is the cotangent bundle of a smooth manifold. Smooth manifold. So, so let me show you. Let me do one more picture. So let's consider the cotangent bundle of S1 or it's or this cotangent bundle of S1. So there is S1, which is just, just which is just a circle. Then it's cotangent bundle, just look is the is a vector bundle over this S1. So this time S1 is just the vector bundle. So every fiber is just looks like it is just a so it's just a one dimensional vector space r but by cotangent this this cotangent bundle i mean if we take the if we take uh this uh bounded bounded interval in each fiber then it gives up this cotangent bundle over s1 so it it just looks like this yeah, this this is the exactly. Yeah, this is exactly the the this cotangent bundle of S one. Uh, then for any coordinate Q on the base, if we consider its dual base P, then the Q, but the P gives a symplectic form on this cotangent bundle, and this is called the canonical symplectic form. Uh, I'm I'm so sorry for my terrible drawing. Uh, I think I'm so nervous now. So my drawing is so poor than usual. <laughs> uh, any questions so far? Otherwise, uh, let me move on to the next slide. Right. So the rep category of a Liouville domain is an infinite category over a field K and 
its objects are some good Lagrangian of manifolds of M. So those Lagrangian of manifolds are required to be exact, which means the, the one form restricts to an exact form. That's what I mean by exact. And, uh, and it, it is required to intersect the boundary transversely. So it is not tangent to the boundary. That's what transversely means. And the real vector field we discussed uh, above is required to tangent to the Lagrangian near the boundary. So I will show you some example very soon. So you can just uh, ignore this right now. And for a given two objects, L and K, it's morphism space given by the vector space generated by the intersection between the between some wrapping of L and K. And this phi H is some is a back is a time one flow of some vector field. Uh, yeah, uh, which some which is a time one flow of the Hamiltonian vector field, some good Hamiltonian function H. So I will explain what this is what how what this means by some by showing some example. Right. So let's consider the above example again. So let's consider the cotangent bundle of S1 again. Uh, but uh, right. Then it is it looks like this. Then Lagrangian sub manifolds. A typical Lagrangian so manifold is just this uh, ray or this cotangent fiber. So let's say this is our L. And let's consider another one more copy of L. Sorry. Then, uh, then actually the, hemi so the this hemi this uh, time one flow sends this original L to uh, it it actually yeah sorry this is the base S1 let's say this is the original S1 then the uh, the vector flow phi H maps this L like this way so it in this wraps the yeah indeed it it gives some it it gives some kind of wrapping in some sense. So uh, this is top so far, but anyhow, uh, as a result, there are infinitely many intersection points between uh, by H L. And L itself. There are infinitely many uh, intersection points between these two. So our home space between L and L, L, L and L itself, is given by this infinite dimensional vector space generated by these infinitely many intersection points. Right, so that's what, uh, yeah, that's what this wrapping means, this wrap, and what I mean by this wrapping of L means. You know, there's a question in the chat by Elian Ryoden. He asked, so is it possible to say what H is explicitly here? Aha, uh -huh, sure. Here H, uh, let me, uh, if we call this particular coordinate by P, if then the Q is given, ah, sorry, H is given by one over P square, the quadratic Hamiltonian. That's what I mean by quadratic and infinity. Yeah, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, then let me move on to the next slide. So. Yeah, I just explained how the morphism space is defined. 
but we still have to talk about the infinite product. So yeah, we have to, we have to define uh, this case higher products. So it uh, so this new k maps this k tensor to one tensor, and this is defined by uh, some uh, yeah by pseudo holomorphic k plus one guns, and which are rigid. So let me show you the typical picture of this uh, yeah this thing. So let's say. So yeah, something like this. So this is our Lagrangian L0, this is L1, this is L2, this is L3. So this one, yeah. So yeah, we we consider we count some kinds of some we, we count pseudoropic k in this case we, we count pseudoropic foregrounds. And here we uh put Yeah, these three or corners are for inputs. So for example, this one, we put at home L0, L1, and here we put home L1 and L2, and here we put home omega L2 and L3. And this the last part, last corner is for the for output. So here we yeah, the output lies in home L0, L3. Yeah, we count such curves. And it is shown that this product satisfy the infinite relation. So yeah, so the, the definition of infinite category is done like this. Then uh, we can talk about the compact category of the given real domain M which will denote by Fm, it just is an infinite subcategory of the wrapped square category. And its objects are closed Lagrangian sum manifolds. So here closed means uh, it has no boundary. So for example, uh, if we go back to this example, then uh, yeah, this, I'm sorry for my, for drawing again, these Lagrangians are non-closed non, non because it has boundary here, right? But uh, if we consider the, for example, uh, zero section like this, yeah, this uh, green one, this is closed, right? Because it has no boundary. So here, the, oh, sorry, the zero section is an object of compact category, but this, our L is, is, a, is not an object of compact category because it is, this boundary, right? Uh, any questions so far? Otherwise, let me move on. So I'd like to introduce a specific synthetic manifold, which I will call, uh, which I will call plumbing. So let's consider the example, the cotangent bundle of S1 again. So Cotangent bundle of S1 can be drawn like this. So first we draw the square. Right? And then if we identify these two edges, then it gives the T the T style S1 again. Right? So this is our D T style S1. Let's say, yeah, D T style S1. Uh, let's consider one more copy of this, this time is one. So this is, uh, let me use another color. So this is blue. And this is another copy of this time is one. Then we, we uh, I'm going, yeah. So we glue these two, copies in some specific way. So yeah, for, first of all, this is the fiber direction and this is 
the base direction for the first copy of cotangent bond of S1 and for the second copy, uh, this is the base direction and this is the fiber direction. But we have to be, uh, rotate the first, uh, sorry, we rotate the second one. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I cannot rotate it now. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry. Uh, so we need to, let me, oh, oh. Paste, color, right. Then we, <laughs> yeah, we rotate this way. And yeah, this is the base direction of the first, the second copy, and this is the, uh, fiber direction of the second copy. So we glue these two space in this way. So which means uh, we glue two copies of these cotangent bundles uh, by following identification. So, uh, right, so we glue S1 and the second copy of theta S1 by using some identification, which maps uh, Q1 times P1 to minus P1 to Q1. So, so the first, the, the fiber, uh, sorry. So the base direction of the first copy goes the fiber direction of the second copy. And the fiber direction of the first copy goes to the base direction of uh, the second copy. Maybe I have to put another sign here, but anyhow, that's the idea of plumbing. Then just because this phi uh, can be chosen to be symplectic, actually this is a, yeah, yeah. By this, we can get another symplectic manifold, which I will call plumbing. And this procedure can be written as follows, more formally. So for a given two cotangent bundle, there is some chart, uh, which we call W chart, where the symplectic form is standard like this. Then we glue these two cotangent bundles by, by the following identification, which uh, just as I explained above. Then just because this, uh, this map uh, preserves the symplectic form, uh, the resulting space, the resulting gluing space is again symplectic. Right, that's what I mean by plumbing. Then uh, we are ready to consider plumping of T star S1 along, uh, sorry, T star, T star SD plus one along a tree. So, right. So now we consider the cotangent bundle of D plus one dimensional sphere rather than just S1. And we perform the plumbing along fever in some sense. So let Q be a fever on whose underlying graph is a tree. Then uh, we consider the plumbing, plumbing X Q. Uh, yeah, so let me explain what this means. So, uh, so let me move on. Let me <laughs> go back to this slide again. So let's say, we are given a fever like this. This is A3, the Kintai A3 fever. Then uh, what I mean by plumbing along fever or tree is that for each vertex, we associate uh, T star SD plus one. For each vertex, we, we associate this uh, a copy of this cotangent bundle, and we perform a plumbing whenever there is an edge. So we perform uh, the plumbing here because these two 
vertices are connected by an edge. And we also perform another plumbing here uh, because these two vertices are connected by an edge. But we don't do that for these two because there is no edge. That's what I mean by the plumbing along the along a tree. Yeah, does that make sense? Right. Um, I have a question. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, so, so you mentioned a quiver here, but the orientation of the quiver play, plays a role in the sense that if you have, I mean, here you take the same manifold that that you sort mm -hmm. of glue together. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it it yeah it has some role, but I will exp I will explain it later in this talk. Yeah. You will see. Yeah. But still, there is it has no role for now. Still uh, until now, right? So yeah, anyhow, that's how we construct this plumbing space. And yeah, we will denote it by xq d plus one. So d plus one is for the dimension of the space. So we, we can consider its rectifier category, which will denote by wq d plus one. And we also we can also consider its compact category, which will denote by fq d plus one. Then there are important Lagrangian sub-manifolds of this space. So first, uh, because we perform, because each copy of T star SD plus one has zero section, each zero section gives uh, a Lagrangian, which will denote by SV for every vertex V. So these are closed Lagrangian. So it is an object of FQ, the compact category. And on the other hand, because uh, for each cotangent bundle, we can consider the cotangent fiber, which is not closed. They are not closed, so it is an object. Yeah, so, yeah those are really not those by LV. So for each vertex, we, have, uh, we, can, we can consider the cotangent fiber. And these are object of WQ, the rectifier category. Then we can grade these two Lagrangians so that, uh, yeah, you can see from the picture that <laughs> uh, the, the, yeah, as we, uh, yeah, mm, right. So for example, once again, this picture, so this is our S S three, for example, and this is our L V, and these two intersect exactly one point, right? So the home space between L V and S three is just one dimensional vector space, and we can grade these two so that their the they the homes so that their intersection point has degree zero. Yeah, that's what I mean by these things. Right, the point is that these are, uh, yeah, just one dimensional vector space. And then uh, we define the sum LQ by the sum of all LV, which is an object of WQ, and the sum of SV, it, it, it will, denote by, it will denote it by SQ, which is an object of the compact category, FQ. Then it is known that this LQ generates the rect category WQ, and the SQ generate the compact category FQ. And also, very interestingly, it was proved by many uh, mathematicians that the endomorphism space of this LQ here in the rect category is quasi-isomorphic to the Ginzburg DZ algebra, which I introduced in the beginning. So the, to study this and infinite algebra is equivalent to study the Ginzburg DZ algebra. Uh, any questions so far? Otherwise, let me move on. Um, maybe I have a question. Sure. 
Um, so what is the, I mean, can you sort of identify inside the Ginsburg um, DG algebra, the um, fun FQ? FQ, sure. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah, you is, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, in some sense, uh, later I will identify this left category with uh, Yeah, this perfect, the category, yeah, this perfect per, perfect comma Q. Then under this identification, the compact square category corresponds to the finite limit or uh, the, the DG module whose total cohomology is finite dimension. Yeah, that's the crisp. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, from now on, let me. Uh, talk about the Calab I'd like to talk about the Calabi Yao triple. So I need to introduce some notion. Uh, right. Right. So, first of all, uh, an object of a triangular category C is called a split generator. If uh, the smallest thick subcategory containing L equals the, the ambient category C. And I heard that most, uh, many people also call this thick generator. So uh, my suggestion is whenever you see uh, thick in my talk, you can just replace it by thick. Yeah, that's a good way of understanding this, the, these things. So, and so for a given uh, split generator, it is called silting object if it's endomorphism, endomorphism space is non-positively graded in this sense. So this is the definition for silting object. And then uh, let me talk about Calabi-Yau property. So let's see the uh, triangulated category whose uh, morphism space is always finite dimensional. Yeah, so it is home finite category. Uh, so so C is said to be the Calabi-Yau if uh, for any object of, for any object X and Y, there is a pairing between home X comma Y shifted by D and home Y comma X. So, sorry, so there is non zero pairing between these two home space. And this pairing must be, is required to be bifunctorial in this X and Y. Right, so here D appears in this ship D. And then uh, I also, I want to talk about the relative, relatively D plus one Calabiao. So let's say C is a triangle category and D is a thick subcategory of C. Then this pair C comma D is relative D plus one Calabiao. If for any object from D and for any object from C, there is a similar non degenerate pairing. But once again, this D plus one appears in this shift. Right. And also, this pairing is also required to be bifunctorial. And very interestingly, once again, uh, in fact, there is a very natural relative D plus one Calabiao pair arising from symplectic geometry. So let's say M is a real domain of this dimension, two times D plus one, right? Yeah. Then with this kind of uh, topological assumptions, so this is the first chunk class of uh, this manifold. And this means that the first chunk class is two torsion in the second cohomology. Then the rect category of M, sorry, the derived category of rect category and the derived compact square category forms a relative D plus one Calabi-Yau three Calabi-Yau. Sorry, this, this pair is relative D plus one Calabi-Yau. So here D plus one is exactly the dimension of Lagrangian in this level domain. Right, so this is a good example of relative 
Calabial pair. Then we are ready to introduce Calabial triple. So let's see and B, B as above, but uh, we also require C to be split closed or thick. No, yeah, split closed, which means it is closed under taking some ends. And let L be an object of C, then we can consider the following uh, subcategory. So for example, this one is the, is consists of objects uh, X, such that home L comma X is non-positively graded in this sense. And this C is also similarly defined. And this D, DL less than or equal to zero is defined by the intersection of C, the corresponding C and D. And similarly, D L greater than or equal to zero is defined similarly. Then this triple is called D plus one Calabial if uh, this L, the given object L is sitting object and uh, the dimension of, maybe, yeah, this is the vector space. So dimension of home C comma X for any object from D is, is finite dimension, is of finite dimension. And uh, these subcategories, C, yeah, these two, pair defines the T-structure on C. And uh, this non-negatively graded part uh, is contained in the thick subcategory D. And this pair gives a bounded T-structure on D. And finally, we require this pair to be relatively D plus one Calabial. Then, <laughs> then we call this triple D plus one Calabial triple. Right. So let me show you some typical example of D plus one Calabial triple. So let R be a D plus one Calabial smooth DG algebra, satisfying the following assumption. So here, the cohomology of R is not is non positively graded in this sense, and the, the zero homology is required to be finite dimensional. Then uh, this triple, right? So this is the, yeah, this is perfect R, and this is what I introduced above. So this is subcategory of derived category of R generated by those who, who's, uh, sorry, those whose total cohomology is finite dimensional, and R is the uh, R by module, right? itself is a pi module, right? So this triple is a D plus one Calabia triple. And in this case, uh, this pair is exactly the standard T structure on this module category. I mean, this subcategory module category, so, sorry, derived category. Right, so this is the kind of motivating example of Calabia triple as far as I understood. Right, so let me move on to the next slide. So I have to introduce this notion, the t cluster tilting object. So an object of triangular category is called D rigid if this home space, uh, L comma L split by P is zero for or P between one and D minus one. And on D rigid object is called D class tilting if it is maximally D rigid in the following sense. So here, yeah, if if these two set, if the, these two subcategory coincides, right? So this is additive L is the smallest subcategory containing L closed under, yeah, direct summons. Right, and right, this is just as even here. So this, this equality means that L belongs to the right-hand side, which means L is D-rigid. And the converse inclusion means L is maximal among those in some sense. 
So that's the definition of the class tilting object. Then uh, the Iyama and Yang prove that for a given Calabiao triple, sorry, D plus one Calabiao triple, the quotient category C over D is a D Calabiao triangle category. It's very interesting. So D plus one Calabiao, it's starting, it starts from D plus one Calabiao triple, but the resulting quotient, the quotient is D Calabiao. And the tilting object L becomes a D class tilting object of this quotient category. Yeah, that's the result of Yama Yang. Uh, any questions so far? Otherwise, let me move on. So we will use this main lemma. Uh, so this main lemma gives uh, some, some specific Calabia triples. So let me explain that. So, so let's see MT D as a ball, but we assume that C is algebraic in the sense that C is the derived category of some DG category A. So here, pi, by pi, I mean the idempotent closure. Ah, sorry, idempotent, idempotent completion. Right. And let's say L is given by the, the sum of this indecomposable object L i's, L i's, and let's assume this is tilting object then we also assume that uh, the home space of and the morphism space of L is finite dimensional. And we assume that there is a kind of dual pair in the subcategory D. So there is object, there is a set of objects S1 through Sn in D that's, that generates D, split generate D, and satisfy the following, uh, some following condition. But here, right, so which means that, uh, yeah, but I think uh, we have already seen this kind of condition above, uh, indeed. Uh, here, aha, uh -huh, I should have mentioned this. So in, in the case of plumbing space, we already show that if this is LV, and this is not S3, but SW, then this home space is zero. I mean, it's non-zero only when P is equal to zero and W and V are equal. Otherwise, the home space is zero. So this main lemma actually uh, contain, yeah, yeah, actually this rectifier category and compact category satisfy the the condition of main lemma. So we show that uh, if these conditions are satisfied, then this, this triple is a D plus one Calabia triple. Sorry, yeah, that's uh, main lemma, but uh, I think time is not enough. Let me uh, skip the proof of this main lemma, which is not very difficult. So let me just skip the proof, the idea of proof. So as I mentioned right, before, right above, uh, so yeah, I'd like, I'd like to uh, convince that the rep category of this uh, plumbing space and the compact category of plumbing space and this LQ forms a D plus one Calabria triple. That's because uh, we already I already mentioned that the endomorphism algebra in this ref category is quasi-isomorphic to the Ginzburg DZ algebra, right? But the definition of Ginzburg DZ algebra says that the LQ must be non-positively graded because all arrows are already non-positively graded in the Ginzburg algebra. So LQ is a tilting object. Ah, first of all, LQ generate WQ, right? So it is a split generator and it is non, this endomorphism space is non-positively graded. 
And this SQ, the, the sum of all zero section, is a generator of this FQ, the compact category. So the pair LQ and SQ satisfy the assumption of main lemma. So yeah, this is our theorem. So this ref category of plumbing, the compact category, and LQ is a D plus one Calabria triple. Uh, and this is what I explained above. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, which Professor Sibila, I'm sorry, in, yeah, ask. So the ref category is quasi isomorphic to this perfect category, and the compact category are indeed compact. So they correspond to these finite dimensional things, and AQ just go to the uh, gamma Q instead. And as a corollary, the quotient category of ref, the quotient category, the quotient of WQ by FQ is a D Calabria category, and LQ becomes a D cluster tilting object there. In particular, if the dimension D is equal to two, then the corresponding uh, quotient is equivalent to the cluster category associate Q, which is two Calabria. Yeah, and this cluster category means the orbit category of this derived category of path algebra with respect to this uh, auto equivalence, which is given by the inverse of Oslander Wrighton translation and shift, shift functor. Right, so this is the user cluster category associate Q. Right. And then uh, what, we, what remains is, sorry, so is there any question so far? Uh -huh. Then uh, let me move on to the next topic. So, right, so here we, yeah, this is, so at this point we, we are, we, I mean, I and uh, the collaborators try to answer try to compute the endomorphism algebra in this quotient category. But by endomorphism algebra, we mean this graded and graded endomorphism algebra, not just degree zero part, the, the graded endomorphism algebra in this sense. So we wanted to compute this uh, endomorphism algebra for some reason. Uh, maybe I can explain later why I, we, we try to compute this one. Yeah, let me explain later in this talk. Anyhow, we try to compute this endomorphism algebra, but as a vector space, uh, this endomorphism algebra uh, is already, can be, yeah, it's, it's very easy to compute this endomorphism algebra as a vector space because the D Calabria property says that uh, in this quotient category, the endomorphism space of L is exactly given by the original endomorphism space in the ref category, people taking the quotient, if P is less than or equal to zero. But yeah, the, the, the D Calabria property says that uh, there is no, uh, uh, yeah, or back, yeah, this, if P is between one and D minus one, so this endomorphism space should be must be zero, but when p is greater than or equal to d, this uh, the d Calabria property says that yeah it that part can be given by its exact yeah I mean the duality actually means that this yeah this part can be sorry the part the the case p is greater than or equal to d can be computed. Yeah, it's exactly given by this. Uh, yeah, by the duality. Right. So this means that as a vector space, we already know how this looks like. Right. So, but still, we don't know its algebra, this its multiplication structure. So something is still left to be proven. Right. So. For the for that we uh, have to we had to use this 
result of LMS. Uh, so LMS proved computed the minimal model of this Ginzburg Diz algebra for any quiver uh, whose underlying graph is three. But uh, let me just talk about the thinking case here. So if Q is thinking quiver of type ADE, which means it's, it is, its underlying graph is a thinking diagram of type ADE, then there's another keyword omega and an idea J in the path algebra of omega such that the cohomology of, sorry, this gamma Q is given by the path algebra of path algebra with relation like this. And here's a proof that there are only mu2 and mu3 survive there. And all other empty structures vanish. Yeah. So he computed the minimal model of gamma Q in this case. Here, uh, let me take, uh, let me use some times to explain what this omega, how this omega look like. So here Q, Q bar omega is obtained from Q hat, right? By deleting self loops, TIs. And yeah, we first delete the self loops and adding long arrows, uh, Vs. Yeah, and here to describe these long arrows, we need to introduce some sum involution, phi on Q, but uh, let me not introduce what this is in general, but I will show you some example very soon. And this idea J is generated by these two families of relations. So yeah, this is, yeah, this is, this appear in the, uh, sorry. Yeah, not exactly. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, this says that uh, these two, yeah, this must be zero because this is given by uh, the differential of the differential of ti, right? So it must be in this must finish. Uh, sorry, this must be zero in cohomology, right? That's the first relation, and there is another relation which. Uh, which looks like this. So if there is some, suppose alpha is some u, then this relation says that u and v commute in, the sum, in some sense, right? u and v, yeah, u and v commutes in some sense. It's, that's the second relation. So let me show you some simple example again. So I already show you that uh, the q hat in this, if q, is given by this quiver, A3 quiver, then the Q hat is obtained from Q by adding set proofs and the formal inverse, right? And the path algebra of omega KQ, I ah, sorry, the Q hat is the Ginzburg DZ algebra, gamma Q. Then the new quiver omega is obtained from Q hat by deleting set proofs. So yeah, this is the, actually this is Q hat, but we, we delete these red arrows. And then we add some long arrows, which looks like this. So this is the, yeah, this is not, <laughs> this is not very long, but anyhow, we call long arrow. And these two are quite long, right? So these are long arrows, right? And the involution is exactly given by the rotation by 108, sorry, no rotation by pi. <laughs> So just rotation gives the gives an involution on this omega. Right. So these blue arrows are the long arrows which we add to Q hat. And then uh, yeah, these are just the degree of these long arrows. Um, the, there's another question in the chat. It's a, is the general involution just the duals of the fundamental weights for the Dinkin diagram? I guess if you have an ADE quiver, then you have a mm, let me think. sort of natural involution. Yeah, I think it makes sense. But ex uh, frankly, I have never thought in that way. But I think it may, it, it's right. That's right. Thank you very much for your comment. Yeah, right. 
So let me explain our, one of our, our main result. So if Q is the inkeeper of type ADE, then there is a ring isomorphism. Ah, sorry, I have to put star here. I'm so sorry. It's, yeah, so the endomorphism algebra, the graded endomorphism algebra is isomorphic to this path algebra with relations. So omega bar is obtained from the omega, the omega above, by adding the formal inverse of the long arrows. We add long arrows above, right? So we once again add its inverse, formal inverse, and we denote those by V inverse. And J bar is, some, is obtained from J by adding uh, this relation. So V inverse is indeed, uh, indeed an inverse. In the as it's a multiplicative inverse of V. That's the that's the relation we have to impose on this algebra. So let me uh, consider this case again. So here this was our omega, right? And these are the long arrows, right? Yeah, this is not long, but anyhow this is also long arrow. And then we add its their Former inverse like this, like this, and like this. Right, and this, these are indeed inverse. And how, how did we prove these things? Uh, right, so we use these the relations in this path algebra iteratively. We first show that any element of this, sorry, this, uh, this algebra, which is isomorphic to the cohomology of this gamma Q is penned by uh, elements of these forms. And then we, are, we also show that for every long arrow V, the multiplication by V, right? Which maps from this to this, uh, has a finite dimensional co corner and zero annihilator, annihilator, which means uh, the cone of this operator or cone of V Sorry, which means that cone of actually this actually means cone of V must must be must belong to this module, this this category, this subcategory. Right? So we need to invert those V. We need to invert long arrows in the quotient category, right? So we, we just prove that V must be invert inverted in, should be inverted in the quotient category. And we observe that that's enough to get the quotient category in this sense. We counted the dimension of both sides and we show that they match. That's the proof for the, uh, the our main result. Uh, yeah. So there's one, just one minute is left. So let me explain why this is very, this result is very interesting to most synthetic geometers. Uh, let me finish it in two minutes. I'm so sorry. Uh, so there's, there's some reason why this is so interesting. So recently, Ganatra, Gao, and Benkatesh introduced a new Fukaya category, which is called the Rabinovitz Fukaya category. So the Rabinovitz Fukaya category is a new category, but the the object of the category are the same as the rep same as that, that of rep category. And its morphism space is uh, somehow difficult to explain, but in some sense, uh, in the rep category, we consider wrapping in one direction in some sense, but in the Rabinovitz category, we consider the reverse wrapping in, in some sense. That's how the Rabinovitz Fukai category, the morphism space of Rabinovitz Fukai category is defined. That's a, yeah, that's a rough, rough explanation. And very interestingly, Ganatra, Gao, and Bekatesh also proved that if the compact Fukai category is a causal dual subcategory of the rep Fukai category, then the quotient category is equivalent to the Rabinovitz Fukai category. So as a result, uh, just because uh, our plumbing space is satisfied this property. The Rabinovitz category of our plumbing space 
is exactly the quotient category of quotient of W by N, w, w by F. So as a result, we just show that the Rabinovich category of X to D plus one is a decladial category with a decluster, declustering object, AQ. And this is very interesting. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I said that we start from, for example, sorry, this, let me just write in this way. So this is a, this starts from D plus one clavial triple, right? But the, the quotient, the resulting quotient is D clavial, right? In some sense, uh, this reflects that the Rabinovich category in this cares about uh, Legendrians in contact many Legendrian. So uh, let me briefly say in this way. So in some sense, you can just say that this is not correct, but anyhow, the Rabinovich category can be said to be the rep category of the boundary of M. And here, the object of this rep uh, Rabinovich category is Lejandrians in boundary M. And these are of dimension D. But, but here, uh, Lagrangians in M, these are of dimension D plus one, right? So, uh, right, so this says that the reason why uh, this dimension D plus one that goes down to D can be explained, uh, explained very geometrically in this way, yeah. Anyhow, yeah, this is why this theory, I mean, what we just, what we just discovered is very interesting to synthetic geometers. Right, I'm so sorry for uh, uh, consuming more times. Yeah, so let me start here now. <laughs>